Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to create this awesome monitor to work with Raspberry Pi and Jetson Nano. We will create a 3D model, print it out, and assemble the display. This will allow us to work more efficiently with the different robots and help us in fine tuning. So let's get started. So the first step is to actually design the display and this is what we are going to do. Now I've already designed the part and uh, I will show you step by step how I did this. So here I am in the Fusion 360 which is the software I'm using. Now the first step is to actually design all the parts that are uh, that you cannot change so in this case we cannot change the display the size of the display or the electronics that comes with it so this is the first step that i have done here and as you can see we have a weird screen where the margins on the left they are not matching the margins on the right and the margins on the top do not match the margins on the bottom so this is uh, by default from the manufacturer so i drew it the same way that it came so once we have this, uh, we do have to take care of the wiring as well. So if you see here, we we have marked where uh, the wiring will go. So just to make sure that the covering or the casing does not collide with the wiring as it has to be outside. And then let me go back and then you can see that we started off with the actual covering. Here you can see that it's just an extrusion uh on the sides and i have left i think 5.5 or 6 mm on the sides on each side so that should be good enough now i i could have done more and i could use bolts and nuts to actually screw them in but i, I don't want to do that so i will just use glue that's why i'm keeping it as thin as possible uh not not having too much space uh to make it look more elegant so that was the idea and then we will add the support for the plate itself, the screen. And as you can see, whenever you are working with a 3D printed part and you're designing something for, especially for 3D printing and you have to fit something, you have to make sure that there is a small amount of space in between. Because uh, if you put it exactly the same, it will not fit together properly. So especially a screen is a little bit of a delicate component, so you have to make sure not to crack it. So I have given about 0.5 mm over here, and hopefully that will be enough. Now you could give 1 mm as well, my recommendation is 0.5 to 1 mm. But uh, in this case I want it to be a tight fit, so I'm giving 0.5. Here we add the gap, so you can see this is the gap for the wiring. So this is where the wiring will come out, and then we will... Uh, add the electronics part over here so the next step is to actually uh, where is that yeah the curve the we will curve the what do you call the edges this is known as fillet so whenever you have 90 degree angles it's always best to curve them a little bit and this is what we have done on the sides here and here we have the back panel and this is just the covering that will go on top now this i'm not going to 3d print because it's just too straight and uh, it will be just waste of 3d printing so i will uh, use acrylic i have some acrylic lying around that i will be using it's a little bit smaller than this but uh, i will uh, make it work somehow there will be a small gap at the back but i think that should be fine so that is the back panel and then we will add the actual stand so this is a separate component now we are creating the stand so the stand will have two parts so this is the first part where we have uh, these uh, extrusions coming out and then again we have applied a fillet so this is without the fillet and this is with the fillet and uh, the idea is that we wanted to make adjustable so that we can tilt the screen up and down so here we will add the hole. I think this is 3.5, uh, 3.5 mm because I'm going to use a 3 mm uh, M3 bolt. That's why I am using a 3.5 mm hole. And then we have these. And as you can see here, if I just go back, this is a very um, 
bad design when you're designing plastics because you don't want a 90 degree um, angle so you always want to curve it that will add strength and it looks better as well so this is what we are doing here we are adding the fillet and this gives it strength and it makes it looks uh, look better as well then we will move on to uh, the, th the second part of our stand which will be placed on the ground and here you can see that we are adding it and now the thing is that I want this to be really tight because when we tilt the screen we want it to hold where it has been so therefore I have not given any tolerance in between so if the gap here is three this part is three as well so that we have a very tight fit so then we will go to the the height of the stand now this is something I just uh, randomly chose you can increase the height or decrease it but I think this is a sweet spot since we don't want a 3d printed part to be very long and we don't want it to be too short that it's touching the ground the screen is touching the ground so I think this is somewhere in between now the thing is that uh, you could actually make some holes here or you could make some uh, ribs over here to give it some strength if you are making the holes but I didn't go through all of that because uh, at the end of the day we are going to decide the infill and that should be good enough because a square like this without any holes it's too much material but still because we are going to play with the infill it should be fine and then this part here is just a random design I did by hand uh, it's not uh, fixed or it's not related to anything it's just something I thought of and I just added it here now let me let me show you the sketch so this is the sketch so when you're sketching something like this you should always uh, mirror the sketch so do it on one side and then mirror it on the other side don't uh, do by hand on both sides because it won't be even and one more thing is that when you are doing it with the mirroring just make sure your curves are aligned with the horizontal line so you can see here at this point it aligns with the horizontal line then that makes a perfect curve that will go all the way if you do not have it like that if you have it like this then there will be a bump in your curve so uh, here I'm exaggerating to show you but normally it will be something like this where you might not see the bump that much but it will be visible if you touch it or you could feel it so this you can move it around and you can make it horizontal so that is the correct position for it and the same thing goes over here because you are aligning it should be in the middle and uh, yeah that is pretty much it and I think the the height of this was 5 yeah this is 5 5 mm and again here we have a very crucial point which can break easily so we have to apply fillet over here so this is what we will do we will apply some fillet here and we apply some fillet here as well now one more thing about 3d printing is that if I just turn these off and let's turn this off as well and let's turn off the cover so a very important thing about 3d printing is the hangs so if we were to 3d print this uh, this whole part will be printed without any support but this part here does not have any support structure uh, does not have any support so it's it's at a 90 degree angle and uh, the machine will have to print it with a support structure all the way up till at the end which will waste material plus uh, it will be very hard to file so what we can do is we can add a fillet over here so that it can print without having uh, to print the support so this was the added thing and at the end of the day it's always good to check the electronics as well so what I did was I just added the electronics part here at the end to see if it will fit properly and it's it's not colliding with this or this so it should be fine and I haven't actually decided on how I will fix it but later on we can decide so this is uh, it for the 3d design if you want to render it you can also go to design and render and this will show you what it will look like you can change the settings and make it look more uh, you know beautiful but 
in this case i i don't care about that and one more thing that these lines over here right now they're looking ugly but this will not appear in the 3d print so you don't have to worry so um, actually you can see it here if you go to visual style and you put it shaded there you go so that edge over here so that edge over here you can see this was the edge now it's gone so it will not actually look bad so that's not an issue so this is the design and now let's go to the 3d printing and see how it turns out So here we have the assembled part and you can see that we are able to move it around so we can tilt it now it looks good and it feels sturdy now we also have printed the frame and you can see that that printed well as well so the next step would be to assemble this part so we have the screen over here and let's see how that goes in so this is the point where we have the wiring so that's why we have a spacing for that so I'm going to just press this in and looks like a tight fit which is good in our case because it will not fall hopefully yep it doesn't fall so that is good and let's see from the front looks really good okay so now what we can do next is now we have to attach this somehow over here so the idea is that we are going to use an acrylic plate now I have this uh, size already so I'm going to use this I will place it so it's not completely covering but we, we're going to still use this and um, we will place it we will cut it from here and then we can place it simply on top and then all of this can go on the side somewhere wherever we find the appropriate placing and of course this will be attached somehow like this so that um, the the other way around and uh, then we will place this so that it does not collide with it so the first step would be to cut it here and then fix it now I'm going to use glue to actually fix it because uh, I wanted that a uh, sleek elegant design so I did not add any places for the bolts and nuts so I'm not planning to use this LCD elsewhere so I will just glue it down with some super glue so all of the assembly here I'm going to use glue for that and uh, let's see how that goes
so here is our final output and you can see that the screen turned out to be very elegant and it looks very good and at the back as well you can see that the electronics is uh, tightly secured and it does not wobble even though we have just used glue and uh, some bolts and some nuts so overall it turned out to be very good and you can see that it actually turns and it stays in its position so if I wanted to rotate I can rotate quite a bit and at the top I can go really crazy and I can even go almost straight as well so the the base here I was a little worried about but it turned out to be a good design where it actually stays quite sturdy it does not move around even if I push it it does not flip over that was one of my concerns and overall it looks really elegant so that is a bonus I would say and the color yellow actually makes the screen pop out so at the end of the day it looks very um, I would say it looks like an actual product just if I put my logo here as well maybe it will look like a brand but anyways so you can see here we can use this screen for programming and as I am not sure how it will look in the screen but here it looks very comfortable it's not very blurry so I can easily type uh, in over here any program I want so I can write here imports math for example so it, it it seems very normal it's nothing weird so I have used a 7 inch screen before this and the 7 inch screen is just not good enough it's really small but this 10 inch screen actually worked out really well and the image is quite sharp so our main concern was to program with this and as you can see the text itself is very clear it's not blurry so it will be easy to write code in this and uh, program different robots so the idea here is that you should have a specific place for this so that you can program it without actually connecting wires every time uh, and uh, I'm using this keyboard which actually comes with the dongle and uh, the dongle I have connected it to the Raspberry Pi so this is basically comes with the uh, mouse pad I'm not a big fan of this but uh, I might actually uh, get a different mouse to work along with it but the keyboard itself works fine and now it is a complete setup that I don't have to move around ev everywhere so I can keep this station booked just for Raspberry Pi and Jetson Nano projects so this way it cuts down on the project times it, it makes the the working part a little more efficient so uh, because a lot of the time connecting the Raspberry Pi and Jetson Nano is is just painful even though it's very simple and easy to do it's it's a little bit of small small steps that just add up and it makes you um, a little bit lazy so this will help in uh, the programming part and hopefully we will connect different robots to this and work out at the end so all the files for this will be available on the, my Thingiverse page so you can download this and print out yourself. So I think this is it for today's video. I hope you have learned something new. I hope this was useful. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one.